Hey, Dr. Lisa, you are welcome. Welcome. This year's Teach Me to Teach conference. It's so nice to have you with us today. Thank you. We'd be really honored and privileged. And Thank uh, you. looking forward to your session. And I just want to let everyone know who you are. Now, Lisa Nolan, she is a sex historian who has tracked the pansexual progressive revolutions for decades. She's the CEO of the MSC, the Marriage, Sex and Culture Group in London. She edited and contributed to God, Gays and the Church in 2008 and the new normal in 2018. Recently, Christian Today has published several of her articles. She exposes the bad, but also promotes the good and addresses claims used to discredit traditional Christian sex ethics. Mm -hmm. Sex Proving Your Kids seminars works closely with once gay and parent power organizations, mm -hmm. cause freedom of speech campaigns. A session today is helping children find their identity. And I'm really excited about this session today, actually, Lisa. I really am. I think, I think it's one that um, is something that is really strong in my heart. And the reason being, because I know when we talk about um, creating an engaging environment, as an early someone who's worked with them um, as a um, nursery manager. I know that um, to create an environment where children can learn, they teach us four things. One thing they teach us is that every child is unique. They teach us about the importance of positive relationships. They mm -hmm. tell us about, um, make sure that you're creating an engaging environment. And the other one is the learning and development. When it comes to the fact that every child is unique, it's so true because I think this is where self-identity falls in. For if a child doesn't know who they are and whose they are, it's extremely hard to truly learn. Won't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I remember I taught someone ages ago, such a good boy, wonderful boy, but I asked him a question because um, I do a lot of teaching um, based on a heart-based approach. And I asked him, I said, what do you feel about God? And he told me, I really don't think um, the Bible is true. Now, if he's thinking that way, and it's also something to do with his identity, it's going to be mm -hmm. very hard for him to learn, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think self-identity is truly important. Um, it's important for our children to know um, that they have strengths that were God-given. And also to understand that, you know what, um, they were made and created by God for a purpose. So I love your session. So welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You will run my PowerPoint. Hello, everyone. Fabulous um, being with you. Thank you. Okay, so helping children find their identity, what parents, what they're up against and how we can respond. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, people, th there's a ton to talk about. This is the PowerPoint. If you want more, you uh, contact Karen. That's fabulous. She has it or contact me. Karen is the best first person here, but I will go through identity, personal rationale for why I'm focusing things as I am, insidious influences, upping your game, and what adolescents especially need to know. Kids definitely need to have proper sex ed. My problem is this is completely rubbish sex ed. And finally, wonderful resources. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of identity, Okay, um, and that's a huge word. 
Uh, there are various factors in identity formation, um, which simultaneously and often, sorry, I'm going to just get rid of that. Here we go. Uh, simultaneously and often subconsciously interact. There's biology, there's psychology, there's individual experience. There are relationships with parents, siblings, and wider family, including birth order, etc. There is school and church input, peers, media, and the internet, local, regional, and national cultures, etc. Thank you. Um, th now, one idea um, that I want us to think about a little bit is third culture kids, because I think a lot of our youngsters can be accurately understood through this concept. And that is third culture kids, they do not fully identify with their parents' culture or that of their country of residence. Instead, they create and inhabit a third culture, though parents often fail to realize it. Sadly, oh, it's just a phase. Okay. And uh, each of the above, they deserve an entire session. However, what I see as the most serious threat is that of the pansexual woke revolution and strategic responses. And sorry, I will just start you off. Thank you. Great. Thank you. The material below is relevant to all youngsters, but will impact them to different degrees and in different ways. Thus, they may need to be addressed from angles which match their situations. Again, this is a huge spectrum. So I'm just trying to give you a big um, um, overview, and then you pick out what you think is most important for your own youngsters. And then it's important also that you recognize your own identities and come to peace with them because you will be more successful in relating to your kids in terms of these issues. Thank you. Okay, so me personally, yes. Okay, so I'm married to a poor, long-suffering man. <laughs> He's a New Testament academic, gorgeous Christian guy, John Nolland, mother of two adult children, I have made so many mistakes, we won't even start. And said a lot of I'm so sorry. I'm a sex historian of the pansexual revolution over 40 years or so. I've been seriously wrong once. I failed to realize the threat posed by transgenderism. Sadly, otherwise I've been right, I know. Um, I'm a former teacher, youth worker, and youth chaplain. I am the CEO of the Marriage, Sex, and Culture Group London. Email me if you'd like to go on the free MSC list. Thank you. Um, I shared my home and golden retriever with a lovely gay guy. Um, he died of AIDS. A close bisexual friend um, fell madly in love with me. Bless her. I turned down the sex. I kept the friend. You may disagree with me, and that's fine. I can offer you my experience and research, and you just take it from here. But what most concerns me is this focus on youngsters. Adults can basically live as they like. They shouldn't, but uh, I'm most concerned about this targeting youngsters long before they have the wherewithal to understand and evaluate complex issues. Please, if you get if you go away with nothing else, children are wet cement. So thank you. Perfect. They are not adolescents. So children are not adolescents. Adolescents are not adults. All three are have different age stage challenges, etc. Yet, increasingly, they are being treated as if they are by the, quote, professionals. Sadly, many parents still tacitly trust the system for all sorts of reasons, while those sounding the alarm are written off as extremists. If only that was the case. So my Muslim colleagues ask me, what has happened to the Christian parents? Don't they care their kids are going gay? And I have nothing to say. Thank you. Okay, so this pansexual woke revolution is successfully targeting kids' identity, beliefs, morality, norms, behaviors, and hijacking their sense of justice, often in plain sight. 
Yet most, for the most part, UK evangelical entities are mute. Have they been to Pride recently? My gang goes to Pride, so they see what's going on here. Please also, maybe the second thing I want you to take home with you, whoever captures the kids owns the future. Lesbian activist Patricia Warren, she's dead right. And sadly, they're winning. Thank you. Okay, they, um, in my view, many youngsters are changing their identity, morality, and sex ethics, but because of successful self-censorship, only their peers know. And mm -hmm. to be fair, let's think about it. How much did we tell our parents when growing up? Mm -hmm. It's far worse now, however. Youngsters are being duped by anti-Christian, plausible, but hollow claims false assurances, and counterfeits, some serious, life-altering, and or irreversible. They will pay in ways the adults foisting it on them will not. Um, and just a, a quick uh, uh, vignette here that just says it all. Okay, so maybe three, four years ago, I was on a radio station being interviewed by a kind of trendy 40-something-year-old and his little 20-year-old um, PA. So it was late at night, uh, alternative part of town, etc. Well, I had come on expecting to be asked about ABC. He ended up grilling me about XYZ. It was awful. Um, and I felt like I had completely failed. He stands up kind of, you know, progressive, trendy, what's wrong with a little bit of naughty fun sort of approach. He stands up afterwards, leaves in a huff, very unhappy with me. His little 20-year-old um, PA turned to me and said, you know, I actually agreed with quite a bit of what you said. And I went, really? You're kidding. Why? She said, well, one of my friends has herpes, and it's been a complete game changer for the worse. And the rest of us are just trying to find a normal guy to have a normal relationship with. And we can't because they are all into doing stuff. See, the 40-year-old would never take his own advice about exploring your sexuality. The 20-year-old and her friends were of the generation that are taking this advice and are paying for it. And to me, that feels very unfair, very wrong, and why we need to up our game. Okay, and though I'm t I touch on transgender issues, that's a huge, huge area here. Please email me if you want to know more in terms of specific um, responses. That It's kind of a world unto itself. Thank you. Okay, so this is the end goal. Um, the triumph of radical individualism and the destruction of heteronormativity, especially for the young. Love is love. Total propaganda. But that is now embedded in many of them in terms of their moral formation. So we have two examples here, one from a drag festival in Texas, one from a breast chest feeding dad um, cover of Time 2016. Thank you. Okay, where is the church? So well done, Karen and her group for one, for realizing we need to raise these issues, address the claims and push back, particularly for our youngsters. Thank you. And, oh, fine, uh, sorry, so we can, um, uh, the last one was Dorothy um, to realize see, this is in many ways, we need to up our game. We're not in Kansas anymore. It's not the same as when we were growing up, going through adolescence, et cetera. There are similar, I mean, some is the same, but quite a bit is quite different. Thank you. Okay, so I am talking about, this is the fourth part, toxic insidious influences. Um, various examples. One, we've seen via RSE, 
relationship and sex ed, now compulsory and much of it dire. People groomed how schools sexualize your children. Fabulous resource. Please show it to every single person you, in terms of your network. Show it to your pastor. Show it to your house group. It's a wonderful, very uh, um, honestly balanced, careful presentation of the issues. Um, if you want to be totally appalled, I was, bishuk.com. That's under number one. B-I-S-H-U-K dot com for... Um, examples of truly horrific SRE. Uh, can the link be sent in the group, please? Yes, indeed. Um, uh, Karen, please, could you do that? So it is groomed how schools sexualize your children. In fact, I have a PowerPoint with that information. Very important. Thank you. Um, drag queens in schools, we've seen that. Pornography, people, pornography is huge. Yes. So this is the first clip we watched about we're coming for your children and we'll convert you bit by bit. Thank you. And the second then is thank you so much. So we've seen that. You can watch it yourself. This is this poor clueless father who thinks he's going to, quote, teach his son a thing or two. And of course, the father is on another planet etc. Thank you. And then the third is Lawrence Fox's groomed. Excellent. Thank you. So this is the this is the YouTube clip. So groomed how schools sexualize your children. Thank you. So the fifth part upping your game, we believe God does bodies, relationships and sex best. They are his ideas. He thought them up. Okay, encourage your kids to be smart and not settle for anything less. If nothing else, encourage them not to, quote, explore their sexuality or do anything irreversible until they are an adult. Then they will, it's their life. But that is a, an easy and uh, um, I think quite a powerful argument. And at least it's like, fine, you do what you want when you're an adult, but right now you're, and I will go through why they are so vulnerable. So thank you. The next. Okay, Miriam Grossman, wonderful. Um, how it damages kids. Kids now know smoking kills. Uh huh. Sex can be a far greater game changer. Okay, so Miriam, wonderful, fabulous book. Also look her up, Google her. Our kids are being taught they can safely play with fire while the offices of doctors and therapists are filled with those who've been burnt inside and out. Thank you. Most kids now, smoking is bad, sad, and stupid even more so with sex. So encourage them to be smart. Many kids would long to be uh, um, holy, virtuous, good, whatever. But when they're at a party, when all their friends, quote, seem to be doing it, etc., oftentimes the religious convictions just fall away. So in my view, you encourage them to be smart, like fine if you're going to do that later, but don't do it now because you will pay for it. Thank you. Okay, then um, now we have, yes, we have, sorry, we, no, we haven't seen this one. Um, Karen, do we have time to show this one? This is um, a wonder, this is another really good resource, four ways this CSE, th this bad sex ed damages kids, it sexualizes youngsters. Do we, you want to, I don't how do you- I think we have that? much time, we've got eight more minutes, so is there okay, anything fine. you want to oh, say? They, that's fine, dear. Can I go back to my PowerPoint? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Fine. It sexualizes youngsters. It threatens their health. It promotes a dangerous gender ideology, and it undermines the parent-child relationship. So upping your game... Excellent. Thank you so much. Upping your game in relation to bad RSE, realize what's going on, um, find out what your children are being taught, 
you may have to start doing life very differently. And if nothing else, you cannot assume your kids are fine. And that even that you know your kids. Because again, remember we talked about third culture kids. It is very tricky. Uh, um, when we were growing up, we had enough problems. Well, for many youngsters, it's far worse now. So your kids need you to be there for them, to be supportive, but also you need to seriously invest in them. So, and, and sadly, many parents are too are oblivious. They're too busy, too stressed out. They're complacent, whatever. Okay, but it's never too late. See yourself as your youngster's primary educator. Their education is your responsibility, not the state's. Thank you. Find out what your kids are being taught. If you're not happy, fuss. Consider withdrawing them and home educating them. I know one of my gang who's on has done just that, and I've heard good things from her. Well done. If your church is not engaged, fuss. How are they protecting their own, not to mention all the others? Their silence here is unconscionable in my view. If they will not engage, vote with your funding and start supporting groups at the forefront like Christian Concern or ParentPower.Family. They do wonderful work in, term, in these issues, in terms of these issues. Start to pray regularly for your child. You are the only adult who will track your child from infancy to adulthood. This is a great honor and one of the most important jobs you'll ever have. Thank you. Okay, what they particularly need to know. Girls are three times, sorry, boys are three times and girls six times more likely to be diagnosed with an STI than their adult counterparts. So then when they grow up, Yes, they'll have risks, but they're far more at risk now. Sex has a greater impact on the teen than on the adult body. Negative incomes, uh, outcomes for sexually active youngsters include poorer increased risk-taking, drugs, crime, likelihood of dating violence, rape, poorer emotional health, lower self-esteem and depression. And what's even worse, is teens often believe they are well-informed and fully capable of making wise, mature decisions, which they are not. I could talk all day about that. They are thus more vulnerable than their adult selves will be. Thank you. Okay, so you, we see the age stages. Again, children are not adolescents. Adolescents are not adults. Thank you. Okay, um, just a few ways, a few things your kids need to know. The teen limbic system, that's right here in the middle, the brain's reward pleasure center appears to be fully developed, but not the PFC, the prefrontal cortex, the center of reasoning, judgment, goal setting, impulse control, delayed gratification. Teens are not mature, and yet they believe they are. Surging hormones seem to alter the levels of dopamine, adding to teen tendencies of thrill and novelty seeking and risk taking. And to note, traffic accidents are the main cause of death among 15s to 29s. They will take, they will make stupid decisions at the, on the spur of the moment, not realizing the consequences or maybe partially realizing, but they do it anyway. Again, because this, the PFC is not fully mature. Girls also have one layer thick cervixes, which contribute to their high STIs, and chemicals released in the brain during sex can become addictive and bond. They glue partners together, which is why breaking up can be so hard to do. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Excellent resources. Um, teen Sex by the Book, um, uh, Kubi's Global Sexual Revolution, and two fabulous um, uh, resources in terms of ex-gay core issues trust, the IFTCC. Thank you. The next. Oh, thank you. Hooked the brain. Sorry, w one back here. Thank you so much. Hooked. The brain science on how casual sex affects human development. It does not aid 
human development. It damages it. You're teaching my child what wonderful Miriam Grossman and questions kids ask about sex, honest answers for every age. Next. Uh, love wise, great stuff. Christian concern, wonderful group. Parent power, also a wonderful group. The health hazards of homosexuality, I won't even start. Yeah. Louise Kirk's sexuality explained, excellent guide. And Miriam Grossman's The Black and White Puppy for Younger Children. Thank you. And X. LGBT voices, very, very important. Thank you so much, Karen. That's me. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Lisa, for that. Um, I think um, this was very educational. Thank you.